morning. Good morning, good morning. Rise and shine. <laughs> Hello. Is it Tuesday? First of September? Crazy. Already September. We'd like to think that it's cooling off here in Arizona and we always think it is and then we're reminded that it's not. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a great day. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've had a pretty crazy morning um, because we have some people coming to work on our house and so um, it's like trying to get the kids all set up for school and stay out of their way and all that type of thing. Um, hey, once again, thank you to all of you who have visited Total Health Apothecary um, to pick up some supplements. Thank you so much. They did come in and they are now being shipped. Um, some will go out today, all the rest will go out tomorrow. So uh, for those of you that ordered, they are on their way. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, I now have a supplement line and I'm totally psyched about it. I've spent a lot of time working on this and trying to find the right products and um, so they're now out. TotalHealthApothecary.com. Got a great little B complex stress support which helps calm your adrenal glands from stress. So those of you that are like bing, bing, bing and overstressed, this is a great one. Um, it's uh, Bacopa, Ashwagandha, Rhodiola, Elithero Root, L-theanine, and Phosphatidylserine. Very calming to the adrenals. On the flip side, though, some of you that are very tired, there is a wake-up adrenal supplement as well called Total Energy, which kind of wakes the adrenals up in the morning. There's also a turmeric. Many of you ask me about turmeric and curcumin for inflammation. Here you go. Um, total Mineral, all your base minerals just trace minerals that you should be getting in your food that we don't. This is a great staple right here. Speaking of staples, we also, there is a probiotic, okay? Shelf stable, has Saccharomyces boulardii, so it helps with leaky gut. This is a great probiotic. And then, by popular demand, some zinc, because they're very hard to find right now because zinc has a really strong impact on your immune system, so I do have that as well. So for those of you that haven't checked it out, TotalHealthApothecary.com. I'm so excited. So today though, we're going to talk about one of my absolute favorite foods, hands down, and that's the butternut squash. Any other butternut squash lovers out there? <laughs> All right. Well, I am Dr. Trisha Pingle. This is your morning checkup. We're going to be talking about what makes butternut squash so healthy, why you should consider it in your diet, um, and I can also give you some tips on how I tend to use it. Um, so, good morning, everyone. Thank you. I see all the good mornings. Thank you. Taco Tuesday, it is indeed. <laughs> Time for that, huh? All right. So, first of all, butternut squash pretty much goes with everything. I mean, I haven't really found much that it doesn't go with. In fact, saying Taco Tuesday, butternut squash is fantastic in tacos. It's fantastic in salads. It's fantastic all by itself roasted. It's great in soups. It's great in sauces. I mean, you really can't go wrong with it. It often gets kind of a bad rap. Why? Because of the carbohydrate component. However, it's a very complex carbohydrate with a lot of nutritional bang for your buck. So, um, so, uh, you know, when I look at eating a carbohydrate, you know, I want it to be one that gives me a lot of nutrition. So butternut squash um, is definitely one of those. Uh, Kelly, uh, you missed the discount. I'm so sorry. The, the bundles are still discounted. So if you're ordering anything that's already bundled, there's three bundles on there, that's already 10% discount. So maybe take a look at the bundles as well. That'll help. Okay. Um, all right. What makes butternut squash so healthy? So let's talk about it. So first of all, it's winter squash, right? But it's grown in the summer, harvested in the fall, and it has that really thick shell on it. So it actually has a very long shelf life. So that's why you can basically use it throughout the year. And one of the reasons I really like it. Um, now, I will say, if you've ever tried to cut a butternut squash, it is a hassle. Uh, it's basically like taking a cleaver trying to get it cut. Many stores, um, I know Sprouts, Whole Foods, Safeway, which is kind of where I frequent, 
all have chopped butternut squash already um, in little cubes. I use that a lot. Um, so that way I can uh, just kind of throw it in real quick. What about with sweet potatoes? Love it with sweet potatoes. It's fantastic with sweet potatoes. It's also great with nuts, like walnuts, pistachios, those types of things, okay? Um, so one of the reasons why I recommend butternut squash as part of your regular diet is due to its nutritional value, okay? A lot of bang for your buck. So one cup, just one cup of cooked butternut squash provides all of your RDA of vitamin A per day. Now we just talked about um, vitamin A last week and about how vitamin A is so imperative to your immune system, so important to the mucosal tissues inside your mouth, inside your nose, inside your lungs, inside your gut. So you, uh, butternut squash is a fantastic source of beta carotene which converts into that activated vitamin A in the liver. Um, but on top of that, it's also rich in fiber, and we talk a lot about how, uh, what was it yesterday I was saying that like 90% of America doesn't get enough fiber? Can you believe it? Uh, so it's a great source of fiber, beta carotene, vitamin C, vitamin E, several of your B vitamins, magnesium, calcium, iron, potassium, and even more minerals. Uh, Carolyn, you're asking about frozen. You can absolutely buy it frozen. I find it doesn't have the same flavor though like I'm not as much of a fan of it's frozen, just me personally, uh, the nutritional content's fine, but like I just find it tastes different. So I'm very picky about what I use frozen in. Um, I do prefer the stress, but the, the fresh, but you can absolutely um, use frozen if that's what you have, no problem. Um, question about ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is fantastic for the adrenal glands. You're asking what that's good for. It's great for the adrenal glands to calm the adrenal glands down, nutritive to the adrenal glands. In fact, Laura, I have a live on ashwagandha. So check out my videos over there on Facebook and it's gonna be towards the bottom somewhere, okay? Um, all right, so as I was saying, butternut squash is full of vitamin C, right? Um, and that is not only supportive for your immune system, but it also plays a huge role in bone formation, connective tissue, so um, anything to do with joints, muscles, tendons, um, skin, healing wounds, and maintaining healthy gums, okay? Um, also, vitamin C is an antioxidant, right? So is vitamin A. And what does that mean? That means that it fights free radicals. What are free radicals? It's these little electrons, basically, that want to damage your cells, okay? So it gets rid of those, right? It stabilizes them. So that means that you have less cellular damage. If you have less cellular damage, you're a healthier person, okay? So uh, vitamin C also, one of the number one deficiencies in adrenal fatigue. So if you're one of those people that is running around a lot, under a lot of stress, right? Noticing the impact of stress on your body, most likely your vitamin C levels are being taxed as well, okay? So very good to incorporate into the diet vitamin C foods. Butternut squash is a great bang for your buck here, okay? Um, in addition, the other thing that you lose in stress are B vitamins, which is why we have a B vitamin on my website here, right? For those of you that are running from a lot of bears or have hormone issues or starting to notice the fallout of stress, that's why we do B vitamins. But B vitamins are also present in butternut squash, which is awesome. It's another dietary way to get it, okay? Um, low B vitamins can raise something called a homocysteine, which causes high blood pressure, can cause depression. It's linked to a lot of inflammatory disorders. So you always wanna make sure you have enough B vitamins. B vitamins and vitamin C's are some of the most commonly depleted nutrients from stress in addition to minerals, right? So why do I love butternut squash? Because it covers that entire basis, okay? So work it in. All right, so let's talk about some of the studies, yeah? Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> you guys are very, hello, good morning today, that's good. Are you all surviving online school? It's like pulling teeth over here. <laughs> All right. So seven benefits of butternut squash 
in research, okay? First one contains disease-fighting antioxidants, which is what we just talked about with these free radicals, right? So not only does it have beta carotene, which is the precursor to vitamin A, which is an antioxidant, it has vitamin E, which is also an antioxidant, it has vitamin C, which is also an antioxidant, right? Numerous antioxidants to fight some of the major diseases that we are facing, particularly here in America, um, with such a large proportion of us being obese, hypertensive, diabetic, right? Um, so there was a 2005 study where researchers found that people who consumed the most um, beta cryptoxanthin, which is the antioxidant found in butternut squash, were 50% less likely to develop arthritis in comparison with those that did not take that antioxidant. So let's add arthritis to the list. How many of you have arthritis? Quite a lot, right? Does it make a difference in how it is cooked regard to nutrition content, steam versus broiled? You know, it always changes the makeup a little bit, Laura, whenever you cook anything. However, there's still a really strong nutrient profile, so as long as you don't turn it to mush, you're still gonna get something out of it. You can't really eat butternut squash raw. It's too hard, you just can't. So you're gonna have to cook it. Um, I tend to roast it, so it kind of has that crispy um, outer layer with uh, all sorts of herbs and spices. Um, most of the time, if you steam butternut squash, I really don't steam butternut squash much. I guess for a soup, maybe. Um, a soup is great because it would release all of those nutrients into the soup pot, right? Um, so vitamin E, which is also in butternut squash, is shown to reduce risk factors of cardiovascular disease, okay? Shows a great anti-cancer ability, particularly in colon cancer, and it blocks the production of hydrogen peroxide, and that results in less cytotoxicity that's linked to Alzheimer's disease. So there's, a, there's some cool research on vitamin E and the brain in relationship to dementia and Alzheimer's disease. So vitamin E is very abundant in butternut squash, okay? So hard to imagine that by just adding some little butternut squash to your salad or on the side of your food would give you such a nutritional uh, bang for your buck. But that's how we need to eat. We need to think about everything we put into our mouth. How many nutrients are we getting from it? So when people ask me, how, many, how, many pro, how much protein should I eat? Or how much carbohydrate should I eat? Or how many calories should I eat per day? I really can't answer that question because calories are not all created equal, right? Carbohydrates are not all created equal. I would much rather you eating more carbohydrates if they're consistent with butternut squash than white bread, right? They're not the same. So for me, when I look at diets and I advise people on diets, what I'm looking for is nutrient density. How many nutrients can you get in your mouth in one bite, right? Uh, that's really what I'm looking at. So I have a difficult time answering that question because it really depends on the quality of the food. Does that make sense, guys? It's the quality of the food, not so much the component of the food. Of course, you have to think about, you don't wanna overeat calories or overeat anything, but in general, really focusing on nutrient density, you'll actually end up eating less over time because your body is getting the nutrients that it needs from its food, right? Oh, did I lose y'all? Number two, you guys will like this one. Butternut squash supports healthy weight management. I know, you keto people out there disagree with me, right? because butternut squash is very much a carbohydrate, right? So you think, no, there's no way you could lose weight on it. But actually, it has been shown in studies to help with weight management, particularly due to its fiber, because it is a complex carbohydrate, okay? So there was a 2018 study that showed that the more fiber women ate during an 18-month study, the lower their BMI, right? And after six months, it's still low. So fiber is very important in your diet. Um, and it's also very filling. So you really don't have to eat much of it to be full. <laughs> I agree with you, Mark. <laughs> Number three, boosts immunity. So this is an important one, right? We like to talk about immunity right now. Um, of course, as we've already talked about, you've got vitamin C, vitamin A, right? Very important in immunity. Vitamin E, very important in immunity. Um, but the liver transforms beta carotene into vitamin A. Um, as we talked about during our vitamin A live last week, vitamin A is what helps maintain all these pink mucosal tissues in your mouth, in your nose, in your lungs, right? In your eyes, in your gut. So what are mucosal tissues for? To block things from going in, right? You breathe in a toxin, what does your body do? Produces a bunch of mucus and tries to get it out, 
right? That's what a mucous membrane does. It's our first line of defense to anything we inhale or consume, right? And it also has a way to get things out, right? So when you get a cold or allergies and you're producing all sorts of mucus, your mucous membranes are trying to protect you. So when we look at immunity in general and we look at why can, you know, in a room full of 100 people with one person with the flu, why do only three people get the flu from them when everyone else was exposed, right? Perhaps better mucal membrane protection, you know, or maybe somebody licked something or shook hands and then licked, you know, got into the mucous membranes in a higher viral load than somebody else. So these are very protective to us and help us avoid getting sick. This is how butternut squash can play a role in this because it's protecting the nutrients that help our mucosal tissues stay healthy. Okay. So, um, Studies have shown that a deficiency in vitamin A actually impairs your natural immunity. And the researchers said it was because the mucosal barriers are not blocking that toxin from getting in, okay? Also, butternut squash is a great source of iron. Now, did you guys know that iron is very critical in immune function as well? You don't really think about that one, right? You think about iron for blood cells, you think about iron for, you know, energy, oxygen, perfusion, you know, uh, passing out, you know, that type of thing. But as far as immunity, there was some research on um, T cell response in the iron deficient. So there was a study, it was on 72 elderly homebound women. And they divided the researcher, they divided the participants in two groups. So they had one group that was iron deficient and they had one group that was iron sufficient. Okay, and they found that the iron deficient women, the increase in their T cells upon stimulation of, of, a, of a stimulus was only 50% of that who had sufficient iron. Okay, so iron's really important as well. The problem is you don't wanna overdose on iron, so using foods like butternut squash to get iron in is great. A lot of people assume that you can only get iron from meat. That is not true, you can get iron from plants for sure, without a doubt. Um, in fact, like I said, I don't eat meat and my iron is fine, okay? So, you know, I get plenty of iron. I get it through lentils. I get it through things like squash, you know, all of these wonderful fruits and vegetables in an even amount. So T cell response is really important. It's also really critical right now during our pandemic. How fast your T cells respond and what they do matters right now. Right? And they're finding that people that don't have good T cell response are the ones that are having more severe outcomes. Okay, so um, butternut squash, great for T cell activation. Um, so put that in. Number four, AIDS digestion. <clears throat> so how does it do that? It's the fiber, right? You eat more fiber, you go to the bathroom better, you get rid of toxins better, you feel better. Simple as that. Uh, there was a 2012 meta-analysis, it was just over a thousand articles that they reviewed that confirmed that eating regular dietary fiber increased stool frequency in people that experienced constipation. Now dietary fiber means by eating foods, okay? So a lot of you say, I know a lot of you the other day asked about, well, what fiber should I take? Should I take Benafiber? Should I take this or that? Ideally, you wanna take it from foods like butternut squash. You know, work that into your diet so that you're not having to take additional supplementation. Nobody wants to take additional supplementation. Number five, supports healthy blood pressure. Now, there might be multiple reasons why it does this, but primarily in the research, what they were founding had to do with potassium and sodium, okay? So butternut squash is very rich in potassium. So when you look up, um, when you look up things like uh, what, other than a banana, how can I get potassium? Butternut squash will be in the list. I have a question about it containing sugar. It depends on your definition of sugar, right? If you're saying carbohydrate, yes, it contains carbohydrates. However, they're very complex carbohydrates, more nutrition for your buck. Butternut squash itself does not contain sugar, like white sugar. No, it doesn't. It can carbohydrate, okay? There's a difference. Carbohydrates break down into glucose, which is considered a sugar. However, they do not contain sucrose, which is what your table sugar is, okay? So it's metabolized different in the body, it's used differently in the body, um, or it's more rapidly utilized, okay? So if you're looking at sugar as carbohydrates, if you put those two things together, then the answer is yes. I separate them. I think they're very different. I think a complex carbohydrate is very different than a table sugar not even in the same arena for me as far as what it will do to the body. I hope that helps. Um, 
So when they look at potassium, okay, the more potassium you consume, the more sodium you can flush out through your urine, through, through your urine, right? So that can help negate the effects of sodium that can cause or be the cause of many people's high blood pressure. Okay, so there was a study that revealed when participants supplemented with potassium, their average blood sugar readings dropped significantly. The average blood pressure reading before supplementation was 151 over 93. After supplementation, it dropped to an average of 138 over 88. Okay, now for any of you who have looked at potassium supplements or talked to your doctor about potassium supplements, you know that you can overdose potassium. You really don't want to go overboard on supplementation of potassium. I very much recommend that you use a very trace mineral. Um, I have a total mineral as a trace mineral on my website uh, that does have some potassium in it, but not too much to overdose. And then incorporate things like butternut squash into your diet to get even more potassium, coconut water, things like that, to bring more trace minerals in and more potassium in without overdosing on potassium. Your potassium gets too high, you have heart palpitations and problems, okay? So that's a tough one to supplement. Um, but in trace mineral type products, usually there's some potassium. Um, so, uh, so you can actually impact your blood pressure and your sodium potassium balance by making sure that you're eating things. Um, Mark, bananas do contain potassium. There is a downside to bananas. Now, first of all, I wanna state that I do love bananas. I put them in my smoothie, I love them. But they're pretty much just a white fruit. They don't have a lot of nutrient density, so they're not ones that I recommend you just eat all day long. Um, working them in in a healthy diet is fine. Um, but there are a lot of foods actually that contain just as much, if not more, uh, potassium than a banana. Um, butternut squash is one of them, spinach. Um, uh, many of your lentils, legumes have a, quite a bit of potassium, lots of dark leafy vegetables. Um, so those are some coconut, those types of things. All right, number six, you may not think of this, can help lower your risk of asthma. Yeah, butternut squash. Crazy, right? Sounds like a stretch. I know. But it actually is based off a study where they looked at consuming higher amounts of beta carotene and asthma relief. And they found that those that ate more beta carotene rich foods, butternut squash, tomatoes, carrots, had a lower prevalence of asthma than those who didn't. They've also found that vitamin A deficiency is associated with poor lung development and can promote a hypersensitive airway. So one of those where you overreact to everything. So anytime you benefit vitamin A and you benefit the beta carotene from that, you're going to have, um, you know, benefit throughout the body. I meant something that tastes good. Well, there you go. <laughs> My keto friend thinks fiber is horrid and is lacking in a lot of minerals just from the keto diet. What does keto do to the colon without fiber? Uh, most, if you're not taking fiber or eating fiber with keto, you're not pooping. Uh, I've, um, you know, uh, that's my biggest concern. You know, you're not removing toxin. There has to be fiber in there. Fiber is critical. It's critical for our blood pressure, it's critical for our blood sugar, it's critical for our weight management, it's critical for our digestion, toxin removal, it is absolutely critical. Now you can do keto and still get fiber, but if they're doing keto and not doing fiber, um, you know, that's not gonna last very long. That's my opinion. And I think the whole goal of changing your diet, changing your lifestyle, moving more towards a healthier lifestyle, it needs to be something that's sustainable for the rest of your life. Doing something for two months and then quitting and going back to your old ways is not gonna do your body any good. So a keto can be very difficult to maintain for much longer than about a month, um, healthfully. It can be done and I've seen people do it and so those people that are really, really good at it, that have really good control and have it worked out, yay, that's great for you. That's not the norm. Most patients that I find have a very difficult time maintaining it. So for me, as a physician, I wanna see people succeed. I don't wanna see people struggling every day trying to figure out what to eat. Um, so I don't get a lot of success from it just simply because unless you have a ton of knowledge and you really 100% dive into it, it's very difficult to do. Um, so it's not impossible, but it's very difficult. Um, so that's why. And number seven, as I was just talking about, supports butternut squash helps support your blood sugar levels. This goes back to the sugar question a second, a second ago. Does butternut squash contain sugar? 
No, it does not contain sucrose, okay? It contains carbohydrate. So a lot of people assume that because it contains a carbohydrate, it would be negative towards your blood sugar, but actually it's quite the opposite, okay? Why? Um, because of the fiber content, okay? I think in keto too, you take the total carbohydrates, you should subtract the dietary fiber and you get a net carbohydrate, right? So Lynn Marie, that doesn't make any sense. If they're not putting any fiber in, then they're not eating any carbohydrate. They've gotta be exhausted, right? Um, so there was a 2018 study where they looked at 20 critically ill diabetic patients. They were administered five grams of powdered squash every 12 hours for three days to test the effects of squash on blood sugar. The researchers discovered that on average, okay, this was over three days, the patient's glucose levels dropped by about 17% in just three days by just eating butternut squash powder. Crazy, okay? So uh, my goal here is to always introduce foods that maybe you're not aware of right? Um, so that you can kind of learn how to cook them. Um, just a little summary. It's a very versatile, versatile vegetable. You can make soups. You can roast it. You can put it on salads. You could roast it, cool it, put it on salads. You could put it in tacos. Butternut squash tacos are awesome. Um, you can, I mean, honestly, I put butternut squash in pretty much everything. I love to roast with like walnuts and apples. Um, if you put a fruit in there or even pears, um, some sort of fruit, butternut squash and walnuts, butternut squash, kale and walnuts. I do that quite a bit as well. You toss the kale in afterwards after you've roasted the walnuts and the butternut squash. You could do olive oil, cinnamon, that type of thing. Um, garam masala, something to that effect. Um, they are amazingly comprehensive, okay? They support weight management, blood sugar, blood pressure, um, digestion, lung health. Okay, they're packed full of nutrients fiber, beta carotene, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, several B vitamins, magnesium, calcium, iron, potassium, and more. So try to work these in. I have a question here, guys. The people with keto, since they don't consume carbs, how will their body produce glucose for their body and brain to function? Very good question. So the whole, the whole um, theory behind that is that they're using fats, right? And fats are a better source of energy. Um, yes and no. Uh, if you're in the woods and you need to run from a bear, you're not gonna call on fats to get away from that bear. You're gonna call on glucose. And if there's none there, you're gonna get eaten. So I'm with you. I don't think it's sustainable long term. I think you always have to have some sort of source of glucose. Now you wanna do that with complex carbohydrates. You wanna do that with, with um, nutrients that actually give you a lot of bang for your buck. It's, you know, it's a controversial area. I have people that are very pro keto. And like I said, if you figure out how to do it and it works for you, that's great. I just find on average, when I'm trying to get sustainability out of my clients, I'm trying to get people that can stick with a certain diet for a long uh, period of time, um, it's a very difficult one to follow. And anytime you yo-yo, you cause more problems. It's more stress on the body. So I don't like to pick diets that cause yo-yo. It's just not my, not my thing. I don't find it to be a long-term solution. Um, now, if somebody's using keto to lose weight, you know, they're like, okay, I'm gonna clean up my diet, you know, for six months or whatever, I'm gonna do keto, and then I'm gonna incorporate back in certain things within reason. I've seen people do that very successfully, lose the weight and hold it, but they have had still had to change to a more sustainable diet after the keto run, right? They couldn't stick with keto, it was impossible. Hair was falling out, they were constipated, you know? <clears throat> Oh, I have to try those ideas you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. So, butternut squash, fun one, right? Um, <clears throat> I think tomorrow I may talk about zinc or SIBO. I know I've had a lot of questions about, Z about SIBO, um, <clears throat> which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And um, I've had a lot of questions about zinc. So those are on the list this week and we'll probably also do a Q&A. So what can help for concentration, please? You know, concentration, it depends on why. If it's from adrenal uh, function, under too much stress, running from bears, using adrenal herbs can really help. Um, in fact, um, total energy is a combination of adrenal herbs, holy basil, ashwagandha, rhodiola, ulithero root, shishandra berry, and licorice root. Many of these we've talked about. If you wanna go back and take a look at some of those lives to help you out, uh, please do. Uh, you're on Instagram. They should be on 
my feed. Um, they're definitely on my YouTube channel. They're also on my Facebook channel. Um, using anything nutrition, you know, B vitamins, very, very, very important, guys. You want to think, you're going to need B vitamins. Can't run from a bear without them. So it kind of depends, nutrient, vitamin C, vitamin B, adrenal support, um, probiotics play a huge role in um, mental function as well. So check those out. If you have any other questions, let me know. And for any of you that have not just taken a look at TotalHealthApothecary.com, please go take a look, TotalHealthApothecary.com. Um, or you can go to my website where I do have an article on buttercut, butternut squash, um, DrPingle.com, and there's a link up in the top menu for the supplement store, the bookstore, um, and the program, if you ever don't know where to go, okay? Um, yes, you've never tried butternut squash, Richard? I definitely recommend buying it already cut up. Is bears a big problem where you're at? Ha 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 ha. Yeah, in Arizona. <laughs> um, so if you're new to me, I have kind of an analogy that talks about uh, stress in relationship to a bear. You know, if you're in the woods and you see a bear, what does your body do? You know, it goes into this fight or flight response. So that's what the bear response is. Not so much, although I do hear we do have bears in Arizona. They're just in Northern Arizona, not so much in Phoenix. A little too hot. But yeah, <laughs> anyway, that's where that reference comes from. I missed the sale last weekend. Will you be doing another sale soon? Um, I will do periodic sales, and I will say that the bundles are always marked down. So I do have some bundles. I have an adrenal bundle that contains the total stress uh, with the total energy. That's 10% off. I have a wellness bundle that is the total mineral, the B-complex, and um, I think the zinc. Um, that's marked 10% off. Um, I have an, ad an advanced adrenal bundle that takes the two adrenal supports plus the B-complex. That's also marked off. I would also check back regularly because I am going to put some sales where if you buy two, you get a discount on the third, and I'll be creating more bundles as we go along as well. So I'm trying to always have the bundles discounted. That way, if you miss a sale, um, you know, you have them. Also, for those of you that do buy, I will offer you follow-up offers. So if your first order isn't on sale, your second order probably will be. I want you guys to um, try them, you know? So no doubt I'll have more sales, whether they're on every product or some product or bundles of products, it'll kind of shift. And that's kind of unpredictable at the moment. But um, there's always free shipping on an order over $100, always. So, you know, there's a sale always there as well. So the bundles and the free shipping over 100 will always be there. I hope that helps. Does the mineral one include calcium? <laughs> um, well, yes in a trace amount, which is how I like to give it. Calcium, magnesium, zinc, selenium, manganese, chromium, molybdenum, and potassium, betaine, um, and boron. So I think you were, Marie, were you the one asking about osteoporosis the other day? This is a great base, okay? The purpose of a mineral is to have small amounts and equal amounts. And then if you need to add more magnesium, for example, you do, right? But having a very base um, amount that should be in our soil from the fruits and vegetables that we eat that you haven't gotten. Um, I can add PayPal, um, although, yeah, I mean, I have a, it goes through Square right now, so if you put in a um, debit card number or a credit card, it will, it will accept it. Um, I don't know if I can accept that and PayPal, but if I can, I certainly can look into it. Um, but you can definitely put a direct um, number in. It is secure. But I will definitely look into that for you, okay? All right. All right, guys. Thanks to all of you. I will see you tomorrow. I think we're going to have two days of a little bit more deep in topics, not so much foods and lighthearted stuff. So for those of you that enjoy that, I'll see you tomorrow, Wednesday, the 2nd. Um, much loved. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I missed a question. Is it a good idea to mix multivitamin supplements? I like the one I take now. I was wondering if it's okay to alternate. Sure. I alternate. I rotate stuff all the time. Different forms, different amounts, keep the body on edge, you know. No, I think it's fine. Just as long as they're high quality and they're high absorbable, um, that's really 
um, what I'm looking at, but I will say if you're looking at a general multivitamin, it usually doesn't have additional stuff. So it won't have enough B, for example, so you can add B to it. Um, many times, especially in this climate, it won't have enough zinc, so it's okay to add zinc to it. So on this first line, what I did is I picked stuff that could be added to a general multivitamin. I have people that take a general multivitamin plus the mineral because they're different. The general multivitamins don't always have the best absorbable minerals and they don't always have enough. So you can take this on top of a multivitamin, no problem. Um, you could take less than the recommended dosage even and get half, you know, added to it. So um, I tried to create everything to be addable, if that makes sense, Richard. Okay, cool. All right, guys, see you tomorrow. I'll talk to you later. Bye.